Hey, good morning, everybody. This is uh, Prophet Brother John calling. And touch the bases with you, coming in, tuning in. Um, I'm thinking I'm talking on the phone, but tuning in to you today. Um, I'm going to be a little brief. Uh, it might be a little lengthy, but not too lengthy. I'm going to try to stay within 40 minutes. But I'm going to be going kind of a little swift today. Um, I'm getting up early this morning. Uh, the Lord has been heavy on my heart. Um, but me meaning to come to you all uh, for the past probably a week, but that was my uh, meaning. Um, I just wanted to touch bases, but sometimes the uh, Lord has a time when he needs to do uh, what he needs to do and to say whatever he needs to say. Uh, so I don't like to just to come on to do anything. Like I said, this is a door opportunity uh, to be used uh, for the body of believers uh, as well as unbelievers. But I just wanted to touch bases with you. Uh, I've been kind of hearing some things and some things have been brought to my attention. And it doesn't mean it's about me or anybody out here. But I, I am a person who God has uh, set in forth to um, be a voice. Um, there are some things that's been said, that's been done, that the Lord has been speaking to for the body of Christ. I'm just talking believers now. For the body of Christ uh, to have prepared themselves for. And yet, I don't know if people are paying attention or are hearing. Uh, to reposition themselves for things that was changing or the things that are taking place. Um, I might touch bases on some of the inauguration or something. I, I'm not going to go in there. It's not about politics, but it's the time, the season we're in. Uh, today that we're in. Uh, because um, a lot of people has been deceived and it's not to um, make them feel bad or anything like that uh, because we got some people out here are even being used by the deceiver to come against a brother sister uh, because they was deceived so what I'm going to do is I'm kind of going to touch bases I am going to be coming out of the Old Testament but I'm going to the New Testament so just kind of follow with me um, I might be looking off I am not used to just looking at a screen. I'm used to talking to people. When I'm on my job, I'm talking to my guys. If I'm at, at, at a ministry, I'm talking to the ministry or some type of setting. Uh, as I have said before in previous, previous um, videos, uh, this is like I said, it's not about thumbs up, thumbs down. Uh, this is not about uh, some type of motive. Uh, I'm only kingdom agenda. Kingdom agenda. That's it. And uh, like I have shared, everybody, I am your brother. But the thing is, dealing with that era. I do walk into the um, the areas of um, prophecies as well as uh, the office of a prophet. Um, I'm not, like I said before, one of those uh, prophets is just naming myself and whatever not to be something uh, that I'm not. Uh, I'm just going to hold on to the identity that God has given me. These here spoken to me a while back. People don't have to receive it. People might run with it. You can cast stones. You can do whatever you can or whatever you will. But I'm not worried about that. As I have said many times, I don't care about ignorant people. There's a bunch of idiots out there uh, that's just doing some things. And I'm, I'm, right now, I could be in a mode where there's a chastisement that will be going on, maybe even some disciplinary. Uh, but this is not a power thing. This is not about somebody abusing the authority. This is about God speaking, and I'm going to be that vessel to allow him to use me to say whatever he has to say. I might look off because I'm not used to looking into a, a computer, um, a, a screen, or whatever you want to call this. Uh, my wife is not here, so basically um, I'm getting this early in the morning. So I think it's, I don't know what, it's the 22nd, because I got work I have to go to. Um, it's the 22nd of uh, January. Uh, it's about 7 o'clock in the morning. So I, I decided to just go how to kind of reach out and because the Lord has been dealing with me all night long. But uh, but during the week, I was planning on doing a video every week, but I don't choose to do what I want to do. I just want to be choose to be led how the Holy Spirit even fills me with his word and, and gives me order and direction. Uh, but there is a lot of things that's going on and people are acting like idiots out there in the body of Christ. Uh, because of, if you want to say inauguration, I would just touch bases a little bit about this inauguration. But after this, you'll never hear another probably another video about something that deals with the political realm, 
uh, 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 things that's dealing with uh, the world way of doing things. As I have said before, I don't know if I said it earlier, I'm kingdom minded. Kingdom agenda. All I have as an agenda is to do what is the will of the Father. All I am is a son that chooses to do the will of what my Father has for me to do. Purpose that he has already predestined and planned for me. Didn't do it years ago. There was a time and there's a place for everything. And this is the time where I have allowed God to kind of prompt me and, and, and be obedient. To be obedient. Uh, I don't have time to get entangled with a lot of stuff that's out here. But this video, I hope that it doesn't be lengthy. Uh, but the thing is, I'm going to keep it short. But I will be coming back uh, to do a video because I am full. And I probably would be doing one next couple of days or something. It's, I might touch bases on some of it. It's some things dealing with the prodigal son. You know, as well as the prodigal daughter. If you want to uh, put it in that perspective. But I will be coming out of the old... And I will be going in this New Testament. I just need you to follow along with me. I'm going to try to be a little brief. Go a little swiftly. But in your time, I'm going to give you some scripture today. In your time, reread some of these things. Reread some of these things. Those that are getting weary, reread some of these things. Put yourself, if you're in a, in a position where you're talking and you're sitting in a setting with Jesus. Not with the world. But to set in a setting with Jesus. I used to do this years ago. Still do it. If, if I'm the 12 walking with Jesus. Sitting in a setting. Sitting back in his presence. Again. The trolls. That's out there. Those people who nitpick and those evil doers. And those that are out there who, who are trying to come against the church. And even sometimes some of you that have been tempted by Satan. To be used by Satan. To come and yet to belittle someone or to throw the stones. And yet, at the same, don't even realize you're being used by Satan. Because I'm talking about the body of Christ. Because we got enough that's going on in this world that's out here that people keep talking about. The verses where we need to unify ourselves in the body. Versus all this stuff, you need to be telling the truth. And you need to be acting on the truth and the will and the purpose of God. The will and the purpose of God. You need to be acting on it. I'm going to jump right on in. But like I said, I don't have time for idiots. I don't have time for anything that's of darkness. That has been tempted. Or somebody's flesh. Or something that's in somebody's heart. I don't deal with that. I don't deal with comments. I don't deal with fools. You might not like what I said. I can care less. I'm a type of person. The God has made me that I have been built for the weather, as I have said before. I'm not no superman, no superhero, but I am just a child, a son of the living God. And yet, in the same sense, I'm not going to sit here and try to waste my time for ignorant people. There's two types of people who are ignorant. Some is just a lack of not knowing certain things. And then there's another ignorance of behavior. I'll just leave that rest right there. I'm going to go on in and do what I need to do, say what I need to say, uh, so I can kind of kind of follow up on it. But if I kind of be looking off, uh, uh, looking somewhere and not looking dead at the screen, it's because sometimes as the Holy Spirit is pouring some things in me, my mouth cannot keep up with them as quickly. So sometimes just trying to give my attention to a computer, it might be hard to do. But I'm going to do the best that I can do. But right now it's not about me. It's about the Holy Spirit being able to speak what he needs to speak. But I am going to be coming out of the Old and then going to the New Testament. And I'm going to kind of be following up on some things and then just to get to my point. But just continually, you know, read some scriptures that I give you. Let it give you revelation. Let it uh, overshadow you. Let it presence of its word do what it needs to do in your life. And I pray that it's a help because I'm only here to help. I'm only here to be a voice. I'm here also, if I have to help my brothers and sisters or the body of Christ to fight against darkness, then that's what I'm going to do. And there's a remnant out there. And I'm glad I'm not by myself. I am glad that I'm not by myself. There's remnants out there fighting. And there's some people who ain't even out there fighting with them. They're fighting against them. That's another story. But you might get touched a little bit in that story of the words that I might have to say today. 
if you can, if you got your Bibles, or some of you got computers, just uh, we'll go to Jeremiah um, chapter 23. I'm going to touch some bases because I've been hearing certain things about certain things people talk about, false prophets, false teachers. I don't care. All of it falls in place. You can be a false Christian. You might find yourself in this area. You might say, hey, that's throwing things out. False is false. Error is error. A lie is a lie. So you can probably be finding yourself somewhere in this. I'll give you a prime example. Jesus prophesied something, and I'm just talking about my Lord and Savior. He, he prophesied something to Peter when he's going to go to the cross. And Peter, you know, out of the love of him and everything, he said, I will go with you. I will go with you. He prophesied and he spoke that thing. And said, I will go, I will die with you. Wherever, basically what he said, whatever you have me to do or wherever you go, Lord, I'm going with you. And the Lord had to look back on him. He said, you're going to deny me three times. Y'all know the story. Y'all know the truth. Peter spoke something. But what he spoke out of his mouth did not come to pass. Not at that moment. He stood off as Christ was going to be persecuted and dragged through the government and, and hung on the cross. When people basically came to him, he denied them. The very words that came out of his mouth, then he denied them. How can out one way something come out of his mouth and then it come out a different way? It happens, y'all. Humanity, it happens. But thank God for his love. I might be saying what I was going to say in my closing, but I might be saying it now. Thank God with his love and his mercy that did not hinder the purpose and the fulfillment of what he wanted to do through Peter. Because it came to the point the Lord told him, you're going to deny me three times and the rooster going to crow. That that rooster was going to crow. And guess what? That rooster crowed. Peter was nowhere needed to be found through the, pro the positioning that Jesus was going through. He was not nowhere to be found. So he prophesied something, but it did not happen. Not even at that time. But what the Lord prophesied over his life came to pass. But he pro prophetically prophesied. I'm not going to say he prophetically. He prophesied something out of his emotions. Out of his feelings. But my thing is, how many of you all have done that? How many of you all have done that? So now do you say when a person made a mistake or did it wrongly or, or did something one time, he's, he's worthy to be condemned and stoned? I'm talking to a believer. I'm talking about the ones who wants to post different stuff. My wife listened to uh, some people uh, on screen. I don't listen to messages from people and everything. Uh, I, I, I watch my eye gates and my ear gates. Oh, I'm, like I said, I'm not perfect, but I have become... I have grown and I have matured some things to do and not to do. Think some things just don't matter. Some things don't matter. My, what only matters to me is me fulfilling the will of God and my relationship with Him and that His presence is always with me. That's, that's my, if there's no presence, I would say, hey, I don't want to deal with nothing else. But the thing is, when I look at the love of Christ towards Peter, it wasn't over yet. Could I look at Peter? Oh, you prophesied something that was false. He was doing something out of emotion. But did Jesus condemn him? Did he condemn him? There's a lot I can go into it, but it's something I want you to just even think about. Hopefully God will open your, your eyes and your ears to hear just that part. Just that part. That he spoke something out of emotions for the love of his Lord and Savior. That he did not fulfill it. He didn't even act on it. It didn't come to pass. But what did come to pass is what Jesus said towards him. What did come to pass is that, that Jesus showed forth his love towards him. He showed forth his mercy, mercy and his compassion towards him. That the grace was still towards him because... When he told him he's going to deny him, he would let, allow him to know his humanity part. It came short. <laughs> so of you. So 
as many of you are. And there's some people out here on the battlefield who are laboring with the Lord. And you have uh, yet come against them, and yet you're not even laboring. All you can do is sit. It'd be different if you were given uh, constructive criticism, but you criticize and look for something to find so one mistake. Look for it. Look for it. How foolish. How foolish could you be? You need to read the book of Galatians. Seek out the fruit of the Spirit. I know it's a different generation. It is out here in different generations that are out here. We need some mentors. We need some uh, fathers. We need some spiritual fathers out here. The screen is not going to do a lot. But the, the thing is, we need some spiritual fathers and some spiritual mothers out here. Uh, some of those that in generations, maybe you need to turn to them. If you ain't turned to them, I, I, don't, I pray that God will open the door that you will connect across paths with someone. Because one thing I learned dealing with this walk, and I'm talking to the New Testament believers, I'm talking about those that have the Spirit of God, the Holy Spirit. If you got something with somebody, especially I'm just thinking about, it just came to me on virtual. If you have a problem with somebody versus you posting everything about everybody, everybody has a different purpose, I understand. But if you have a, per a problem with an individual, an individual, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ said, if you got an art with a brother, uh, if that's a sister, you need to go to them and go to them alone. I don't know how you inbox, post, or go to someone, but you need to go to them alone. And if they, if they not receive you, if they, you know, repent, fine. If they apologize, you conversate, and everything's worked out, fine. But if, if it's the second time you need to go, take a witness with you. You could do it virtually. You might say, hey, I don't know this person clear across 10 bucks too. But you could do it virtually versus sometimes just taking things and and and, and making a mess of things. But we do need some spiritual uh, people that will step up, some, some mentors. Because there's awesome, I, I spoke on that, uh, dealing with exposing generational curses that leads from your, just your old life into the new born again. Christ like those who come into the kingdom because there's some things in us. Then it might have been a lack of a father, mother, whatever it might can be. Trauma, some things that sometimes we might carry it and don't even notice in our heart. Bitterness. It might be something in our heart that we're holding against something, against somebody. Or yet, for whatever reason, you might have, I, I would say it like this, a nagging mama who just talked about somebody who just, who criticized everything that was. And yet, at the same time, you just picked up on that same familiar spirit. We need some, some, some mentors to step up because there's some people out there working and you need to leave them alone. I'm still working, still laboring. Me and my wife, we still labor. We got people to come to us, talk about issues, problems that they have in the church. And we're not coming to just to, to grasp what they have because before I even deal sometimes with the church or the body of believers, I deal with the individual to ask them to examine their self, their self. Because there's some stuff in them. But if you get a chance, look at the exposing video. But I'm going to go to the Word of God real quick. Uh, I'm going to just keep up with me. I have a lot more to say, but I am trying to be brief. I'm going to try to make sure I stay in my time frame. This is dealing with Jeremiah. I'm going to speak this out. Old Testament going to the New Testament. If you can, go to Jeremiah 23. Starting at verse 23. And we're going to probably go to... Um, Verse 33. I might read some of it. I'm not going to paraphrase some of it like I normally do. It's a lot that I can say that probably will open eyes. But just dealing with time. But I'm not going to rush. But I am going to uh, be swiftly through it. Go through it on your own time. Listen to the video if you need some help. This is kind of like a teaching moment. But yet, go to the Word. Say that the Word speak. Jesus' feet. And let the word continue to teach itself. Those that might be hurt or bruised, listen to some things. Put it behind you, certain things that you fell short in, and move forward. Get away from the distractions and move forward. Put one foot in front of the other. Don't move by what you see. 
Because we walk by faith and not by sight. I'm a little fired up, but I'm going to move on. Starting in chapter 23 in Jeremiah, 23 to 33. And I, God, am I God at hand, saith the Lord, and not a God afar off. Can any hide himself in secret places that I shall not see him, saith the Lord. Do not I feel heaven and earth, saith the Lord. I have heard that the prophets said that prophesy lies in my name, saying, I have dreamed, I have dreamed. How long shall this be in the heart of the prophets that prophesy lies? Yeah, they are prophets of the deceit of their own hearts. Sometimes our hearts will fool them. Sometimes if you have wisdom, you'll understand why sometimes people make certain choices or do certain things. Don't mean they're false. But sometimes there's some things that you, you, you really desire. Sometimes vanity will throw us off. It did Solomon, the wisest man there was. Vanity threw him off. He knew about vanity, but God told him about the vanity of his mind. He told him that yet yeah, if he lurked over here, that these women would draw him and turn his heart. There are certain things you can get connected to with idolatry. Not saying you what color, but it's an image, something that you want so bad that it can set something in your heart and throw you off. But you'll be all right. You'll be all right. How long should this be the heart of the prophets? Their prophets are alive, yeah, they are prophets of the seed of their own heart, which think to cause my people to forget my name by their dreams, which they tell every man to his neighbor, as their father says, forgot my name for Baal. That's another story. The prophet that have a dream, let him tell a dream, and he that have my word, let him speak my word faithfully. Faithfully. That that what is the shaft to the wheat, says the Lord. Is not my word like as a fire, says the Lord, and like a hammer that breaks the rock in pieces? There's a certain presence. I'm going to talk about presence. We know he's the rock of ages. God, we're looking at it as a rock, but I'm talking about his presence. There's something about his presence that will remove certain things, crush some things, just come to cleanse some things, some things to make itself right there's some things about God's presence that would just change some things it's not like my word like as a fire says the Lord and like a hammer that breaketh the rock in pieces and that goes that fire it's consuming God's presence is consuming sometimes the word will come and it just consumes us and he might give you a word and it's not meant for everybody else. And when he gives you a word, it just it just does something to you. It consumes you. It's like takes you away. But sometimes that word he's giving you, you can't share with us. Look at all of them in the Bible. Look at Brother Joseph. Shared with his his uh, brother. <laughs> and his father had a dream had a coat of many colors all this stuff was playing a part how many times you've been around a family and God showed you something and you got a special gift and everybody's coming at you wish they can get rid of you destroy your family all oh, family I've talked about that before but I'm not going there but a fire that you have you might have to keep it but sometimes you might have to share it. For this reason, Joseph told it. You have to go read about it. I don't, I don't want to get off track. Told it. But yet at the end, he found out it worked for his good. It was, it was, it, he went through what he had to do for his good. Even though what was made for evil, by family or whosoever, it was meant for good. It brought something out of him. But let me move on. Therefore, behold... I am against the prophets, and the and says the Lord. Therefore, behold, I am against the prophets, said the Lord. That steal my words, every one from his neighbor. I shared this uh, probably on one of our first videos. Uh, it might be an exposing that you know sometimes I'm not one of those preachers. There are preachers that that get messages and they don't give it. They don't get in God's presence. They hear something that gives them goosebumps and they try to use it for somebody else. 
and they go and somebody else go and where the, where the internet I guess that's full of people like that um, that get somebody else's message or go to somebody else's church to take a message oh guess what the Lord told me and, and, and share it and they guess what and I make a long story short because I am moving but these are some words that I'm giving you rain of words they followed the crowd they followed the crowd they was out of their lane officers or prophet you, you just can't go behind someone just like the sons of Skeevers who said they dealing with Paul when they was following him that they was going to cast out some type of devil in the, in the name of the God who Paul served and then they whipped their behind you cannot follow the crowd because you allow them you're probably going to get whipped up on sometimes you might hear somebody make a, a prophecy and then you're taking it and you took it to heart but yet it's same sense, but for some reason your flesh deceived you because there's some iniquity up in here. And dealing with that area deceive you and then you'll follow the crowd and go and oh, going to Broadway, oh what the destruction there is. What a destruction there is to go to Broadway to follow the crowd. I'm gonna get to that. I am gonna get to that. But the thing is dealing with that area, you can't take something somebody else say. If you do, you take it personal. If it, it was meant for you, it was a confirmation good I'm not going to dot every I hit every arrow because I still have to move on but the thing is good but the thing is for you to take something and you take it as if God gave you that word be careful because that word is God it's the same word but you got to understand who's in that word be very be careful because God is a master orchestrator you can't hide he sees all he knows all he knows where and who he placed the word into and he knows who he did not place that word into you have to look at these things people brothers and sisters sons and daughters lambs and sheep babes you got to be careful look into these things but let me move on oh, therefore behold I am against the prophet says the Lord that steal my words everyone from their neighbors and there are false ones out there that will mend it I have to do another video on that, but I will talk to you about that later. Behold, I am against the prophets, says the Lord, that use their tongues and say, He said. Behold, I am against them that prophesy false dreams, says the Lord, and do tell them, and cause my people to err by their lies and by their lightness. Yet I sent them not, nor commanded them, therefore they shall not profit this. Therefore, they shall not profit this people at all, says the Lord. In the book of Romans, I think Paul talks about uh, the word preached did not profit them because they did not mix it with faith. Some people just take words, just mere words, and put it out there. And there's really no faith with it. They just copycat me, just copycat people. So the word didn't profit somebody because basically they really they they only copycat somebody there's a difference where you have a, a presumptuous word and you use presumptuous faith but if you got a rhema word and you put faith behind it you're going to bring results that is a word if you have a rhema word and you put faith behind it you act on it it's going to bring um things to pass because there's substance in the word there's substance in the word but it would not profit anyone if God didn't give you the word for others to profit off of it it might sound good it might tickle the ear but sometimes you can sow somewhere where a place don't have no type of ground the ground is not right because the cares of this world the pride of life of the left eyes there some, 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 sometimes God knows the heart and then you got these fouls and everything just comes fouls of the air coming uh, somebody's not studying the word so there's no water there's no living water there's not a flow of a river of living water that can get in them to stir up something on the inside of them and some people just hard they just they got a hardened heart so it's hard ground they'll waste your time you can waste your time I got a word want somebody to hear it and it's like taking um, uh, pearls and giving it to swine they'll trample all over it you got to know who you saying this stuff to you can't just go say a lot of stuff to the world and and don't think I'm sounding like I'm trying to be mean 
or bashful. I'm not. I'm trying to help. I, I'm speaking to some of you as if I'm speaking to my children. And some of you might be 30 some years old, 20 some years old. It doesn't make no difference. I'm speaking to you probably as, as children. But the word preach sometimes don't profit them. Because you yourself didn't mix it with faith. It wasn't a word for you. And it wasn't a word for them at that time. What I'm going to do is. The uh, reason why I brought that out. Dealing with Jeremiah. Is that sometimes don't don't just take something and run with it. Don't follow the crowd. Yes I got my reading glasses on. These are my reading glasses. And sometimes I just. Uh, I need them to read sometimes. To see certain things. Lighting is totally different. But um. You see me take them on and off at times. Um, I just have to. Sometimes when I just keep them on, they just only for reading, and then I find out I get blurry. Uh, but my thing is dealing with it. I'm gonna go somewhere, and I'm gonna touch bases with you all. Uh, dealing with Daniel, Samuel, and David. Probably even saw a little bit, real quick. Thirty-one minutes. Okay. But uh, dealing with that area, um, because I'm gonna show you something that Samuel, you could be a prophet. And I want somebody, some, some of you to look at Samuel to see if he was a real prophet or not. Some of you already know he was. But Samuel had a point where he could be in a position that he wanted something. And yet he couldn't see it unless the Lord helped him. So let's go to, um, but the first, this first sex segment was Jeremiah chapter 23. Started at verse 23. You could, actually I would tell you to read the whole chapter. Read the whole chapter of uh, Jeremiah 23 because this can help some pastors it's Old Testament but yet it will help it will help but if you don't take heed to it you just read it and you don't let it bring forth a change when I'm talking about a transformation not conforming not conforming to look like you're part of that word uh, and, and not think some changes need to take place no there's a transformation that needs to take place in the body of Christ you have to become the word you have to become that new creature in Christ Jesus. If not, we're just going to go through the formal things, the formality of things, denying no power because the power wasn't there because you wasn't willing to change. It depends on your heart. God sent his word to heal and deliver. That means to bring forth some type of change. But it depends on the heart. There's more to say it. I got to go. Let's go to uh, 1 Samuel. 1 Samuel. Y'all know about Samuel. I'm going to give brief. He was uh, he's a young lad. His mom uh, was Hannah. Uh, she basically got to that place where she was barren. And then she uh, asked the Lord. She went to the priest, Eli. Uh, crooked. Crooked. He was all right as a priest. But he became, uh, you want to say, defiled. Him. His sons and them, they was over the temple. Uh, they, was, they was probably in a leadership position. Defiled. Doing all types of things, sleeping with whatever not. But this was a man, uh, a son that was raised, that a woman went and prayed about to God and found out she she had a desire and God granted her the desire. Just to make a long story short. He was a young lad. She told the Lord if she gives him, uh, give her a son, that he will, she will offer it and give it back to him. Where Samuel dwelled in the temple with Eli the priest at that time. And he grew. And he learned God's voice. And he uh, became uh, basically a prophet for a nation. Now he was came into it. And I'm going to still go into to some things. Samuel was one of the prophets that came in the book of Judges. And stuff. God raised up some judges. There was a time and a frame where people. Where people. A generation died out after Joshua, and then another gender type of generation came in, and they were seeing things out of their own eyes, seeing things out of their own eyes, how they wanted things, and 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 wanted this king and whatever. Not they was I, I would say they was um what type of generation? Uh, they was undisciplined. Um, they was just uh, I would say somewhat like unruly, unruly. See things the way they wanted to see them and no type of guidance or direction so God raised up some people there was Samson's and some other ones uh, that was raised up but we're talking about Samuel now and Samuel was raised up and he grew in the household of the priest of Eli 
and he started hearing God's voice and he didn't know it and Samuel kind of was used at that moment to help him order his steps for him to learn God's voice when he learned God's voice and anything he said he came and he uh, he heard he spoke whatever the Lord have told him to do. He became a, one of the well-known prophets back in the days. And God honors him. When I say he honors him, he honors him. Um, I might have said something in my video too that sometimes people used to look at me kind of like a Samuel because dealing with there and I'm not nowhere, probably I'm not going to say I, I'm not near that, but the thing is somewhere near that where I'm the type of person, like I said, if you ask me something, the type of person, if you ask me something, I'm talking about Christ related, or you need something, whatever, I'm going to tell you the truth. I, I, I sure enough try not to put my opinion in. A lot of people look at me too radical when it comes to the word. I'm about the word. I, I'm about becoming the word. I'm about speaking the word. I'm, I, I trust in the word. I rely on its power and its authority. And as long as I trust in him, I don't look for none of God's word to come back that he allows me to speak to come back void. Samuel, he didn't allow anything of Samuel's words to not to be fulfilled. Everything he spoke basically established itself. But the thing is, dealing with Samuel, Samuel made some choices and decisions. I just want to show you how sometimes we as prophets, I don't care if you're apostles, teachers, sometimes we can be off. I'm not saying all the time you just live a life like a reprobate, but you can be off sometimes. And you just don't know everything and let it to God divinely, divinely intervene and give you some type of guidance. Hear what I say. Sometimes we mean well, but sometimes God has to come in to make sure it goes the way he wants it to go. So what I want to touch base is with, with Saul and David. Samuel, Eli, that's a whole different other stuff, story, but I'm going to deal with Samuel and David. Uh, this was the point where... The people wanted Saul, a king, and Saul was appointed. Well, of course, God had to order David, I'm sorry, David's step, I mean, uh, Samuel's step to go get Saul. Well, Saul was disobedient. Make a long story short, he became disobedient. He meant well, he was, he was anointed, God anointed him and whatnot, but Samuel had to be ordered to go pick the one that needs to be picked. He wouldn't know who to be picked unless God guided him. But Samuel came very attached to Saul. Very attached to Saul. So through this inauguration, so I, so I can stay focused, through the inauguration, what happened with things transition with the presidents of this world, I don't care about what's going on out here, but I'm trying to help some people that, that do. There are some people who really wanted Trump to win for their purposes, the things that's tied up with those things that's in the world which they feel like it's going to have an effect on their life. <laughs> God got it. You have a lot of people who went, and I'm just throwing off something, went to that Gentile nature. They just worried, knowing that they couldn't even add nothing to their statue or taking anything from their statue. And that's what Jesus told them. Don't worry like the Gentiles. I done took you out of that nature. This is where people have not been renewing their mind. I'm, I'm letting some people know. This is where a lot of people have not renewed their mind. They still have an old mindset. Old ways. I, I would say you still, you need to get rid of that religious spirit. Because dealing with that area you're worried about, you can't worry about, God even knows the numbers of your hair. He knows these things. But sometimes some of us can get into a frantic if our emotions and stuff, and you can throw people off. You can throw yourself off. You need self-discipline. You need to go read, as I said earlier, the book of Galatians, what are the fruit of the Spirit? And what are the fruits of the lust of the flesh? So you can fight certain battles while you think it's always out here. You got a great battle with yourself. Sometimes your greatest enemy that you have is yourself. I've learned these things. I've learned. I'm still learning. But I have put some things behind me. There are some things that I had to lose so I can gain. I had to lose some things in order to gain. Y'all know about Job. There's some things that lost, but 
oh, how much more could, could you gain? You're looking at right now. But the thing is, Samuel, let me look at the time. Okay. I'll do this for an hour. Uh, but if you look at for Samuel, uh, dealing with that area, he was attached to Saul. Saul was disobedient. I'm going to make brief brief. Uh, Saul was disobedient. So once Saul was disobedient, um, if you can, you can go to... Um, You can go to probably First Samuel. And he would talk about dealing with David. Let's go to chapter 16. First Samuel chapter 16. I, I had a lot more that I want to share, but I'm not. And uh, Samuel was grieving about Saul. And he mourned and he mourned and mourned and he mourned about Saul. So that lets me know and that lets you all know how much and, the, and I'm talking about Christians, other believers who are throwing stones at some of the, the ones who prophesied or spoke uh, a word and it didn't come to pass. But yet it says this, but yet get an understanding. Get an understanding. But Saul uh, mourned. I mean Samuel mourned for Saul because the, the, the kingdom was getting ready to be stripped over and given to somebody else. And after Saul's rejection, basically Samuel went to a place and he basically pretty much mourned. But once he mourned and went through what he had to do, he had to gird his loins up, as I would say, and keep moving so he can anoint the next king. Well, when he was going to anoint the next king, of course, as he was coming into areas, you know, people would look at Samuel because he was, some people always looked at him as gloom and doom prophet. I shared how many times people used to sit there and say that probably about me. Do you have anything good to say? And yet some people that don't have the understanding or they wasn't listening. They only could visualize the words that come out of my mouth but don't realize the words are, are to come forth to bring forth some type of change or there's some truth behind it. There will be some truth behind it. So I'm going to read chapter 16 real quick. Uh, I don't know how far I'm going to get to. Uh, I'm going to probably get to the anointing of David. But what I wanted you to understand is Samuel went and as he was coming, he went to Jesse's house. And when he went to Jesse's house, he actually didn't know which boy that was going to be anointed king. He's the prophet, major prophet. Didn't know which boy was going to be king. He had to have a divine intervention from the Lord so that dealing with that area, he picked the right king at the right time. Phone ringing. Deport the right king at the right time. Excuse me everybody. I might be running a little bit behind with customers. I'll deal with that later. I don't normally buy. I call them back and let them run. I'm running a little bit behind. But, uh, but he uh, needed the divine intervention a divine intervention so dealing with that he needed God's help in certain things because this man just came out of grieving mourning for Saul so let me kind of go into it because he you know I'm a paraphrase but the text speaks for itself and so sometimes you got to look at and put yourself in other people's shoes how they might have felt where their heart might have got deceitful at where they was dealing with this inauguration or the pose that people was talking about this dealing with the world because like I said after this I'm not dealing with the world but I am coming to help people because God says he will make a way and escape for people if people will listen if his children will listen for one another with the all if you got all what's called forgive if they repent I don't went further than I was supposed to let me go on here so I can kind of put everything in proportion as the Holy Spirit is just prompting me I can't get it all and the Holy Spirit already knows but Dealing with that. And the Lord said unto Samuel, How long wilt thou mourn for Saul, seeing I have rejected him from reigning over Israel? This is 1 Samuel chapter 16. And the Lord still told him, Fill thine horn with oil and go. I will send thee to Jesse the Bethlehemite, for I have provided me a king among his sons. And Samuel said, How can I go? If Saul hear it, he will kill me. And the Lord said, Take an heifer with thee and say, I, I, I come 
to sacrifice to the Lord. Sometimes you got to take a sacrifice so you can come in peace. Sometimes because these people looking looking at you know, he was worried about whether he's gonna get killed, and sometimes you got to come in peace uh, when you're dealing with certain situations that are taking place because you don't know every situation. But when God says go, you need to go. When God says do, you need to do. If not, certain things can be come upon you. As he did Saul, he wasn't obedient. So certain things came upon him. Evil spirit. Would God allow certain things to teach you? Yes, I believe he will allow situations and circumstances to teach you, to chastise you. I share something at the ministry that I'm at, and I've shared it many times other places. Sometimes God, and I shared it in a video, can't remember which one. God would take something evil to drive some evil out of you. God will allow fear to come into your life. Sometimes if you don't harbor it to drive fear out of it, because I'm the type of person, the way I am, when I feel fearful, it makes me mad. I, I don't like fear. I don't like the spirit of fear because he never gave me the spirit of fear. He gave me a power, love, and a sound mind. That's truth. I don't like a lie. I can't stand a lie. I can't, I can't, I don't like the feeling of a lie to come upon me. And if it does, if it's something I created, oh, I'm going to make it what cause because I don't want it to bring torment. Because fear brings torment. Fear brings torment. Don't sit there and be tormented. And brothers and sisters, don't go tormenting everybody else. Act on the word of Jesus Christ. Don't go with the Old Testament and try to throw stones. Now, if that person don't hear you and they don't hear you and you take witnesses, then the word tells you don't have nothing to do with them. Leave them, as, like, as it says, like a heathen. You know, but then still go back and you have to forgive them. There's lessons that some of us have to be taught. Many of us taught by certain choices and decisions that we made or certain things that we've done. We had to learn from our mistakes. Trial and error. I'll tell you something. I told my daughters. I got some beautiful daughters. I love them to death. Uh, I told them that dealing with that area, life ain't on your turn. You can make choices. You got free will. But you're on life turn. Life brought you here. You didn't produce life. So... When certain things don't go your way, you remember life is teaching you something. It brought you in this world. And when life is going to take you out of this world. Another story. And Samuel said, how can I go? If Saul hear it, he would kill me. And the Lord said, take a helper with me. And I say unto thee, and come sacrifice to the Lord. And it came to Jesse the sacrifice. And I will show thee what thou shalt do. And thou shalt anoint unto me him whom I have named him whom I have named unto thee and Samuel did that which the Lord spoke and came to Bethlehem and the elders of the town trembled at his coming and said come as thou peacefully and he said peacefully I am come to sacrifice unto the Lord sanctify yourselves and come with me to the sacrifice and he sanctified Jesse and his sons and called them to be to the sacrifice and it came to pass when they were come that he looked at Eliab and said surely the Lord's anointed is before him he looked upon him there's much more to say about this but this is these people who goes out here badgering these people who's out here working I said one time before there's a remnant out here they've not been been used in the body of Christ and God is setting them up because they got to be voices out here but yet if they miss the mark if they miss the mark you're going to try to kill them they might not be prophets they might be have a, had a word because of something that was in their heart. But yet at the same sense. Here you are. If they are prophets. Want to be like. In the times of old. You would choose to murder them and kill them. Murder them and kill them. We know prophets are not honored in our country. In our city. Even in, sometimes in our own house. Around our own kinfolk. We know that. And I'm not speaking for just prophets. It could be apostles. To have apostolic anointing. As long as they're fulfilling the, the, the will of God and the purpose of God for their life. Versus following some type of, if you want to say, organizations or men's doctrine. Or have lifted their stuff up. Because now you have churches that's been speaking. They've been around for a long period of time. How, did they, how would they miss it? But I'm talking about these older ones. These younger ones. I'm sorry, not the older ones. These younger ones that has coming out here and been used. And then you got some people who are 
professing to be Christians sitting out here and yet they're out here working and yet the ones who all they can do is criticize not doing nothing but they say they're Christian I don't care if you're liberal I don't care what type of uh, what type of Christian uh, groups you call whatever I don't care if you're conservative I don't care about whatever I can go there man I can when Jesus chose 12 disciples none of them looked like they was conservative they might have grew up in a, a, a custom but when he picked them they were still at work smelling like fish stinking publicans tax collectors that uh, nobody wanted to deal with if they were if, if, if somebody was coming to the church that way 12 different people for different walks of life who needed some type of teaching needed some type of guidance a leader a man of God someone that would stay in the presence of God seek his face in the time of all the COVID is going on wow but you got some out here who are preaching the gospel they're not walking around here with their mask on you might say hey did that make them better no I'm saying they're trusting the Lord and yet all they need is another stone or a brick to be thrown at them instead of your support your understanding your wisdom not your foolishness let me move on Lord I know I needed more time but and Samuel did what the Lord spoke and came to Bethlehem and the elders of the town repented trembling uh, let me get down here to um, number six chapter 16 verse 6 and it came to pass when he come that he looked at Eliab and said surely the Lord anointed is before him but the Lord said unto Samuel look not on his continent is me but the Lord said unto Samuel look not on his continent or on the height of his statue because I have refused him for the Lord seeth not as man seeth for man looketh on the outward appearance but the Lord looketh on the heart then Jesse called uh, Abinadad and made him pass before Samuel. He said, Neither had the Lord chosen this. Then Jesse made Shammah to pass by and he said, Neither had the Lord chosen this. Again Jesse made seven of his sons to pass before Samuel and Samuel said unto Jesse, The Lord had not chosen these. Seven. Seven is perfect. The numbers are perfect. So when you're thinking, oh, that got to be one of the seven, it had to be because we know in our realm, as people, as believers, that the number seven means perfect, means complete. I think eight me means new beginning. The number eight means new beginning. I, 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 don't throw stones on me if I'm wrong, but I think eight means the, I, I'm getting a check with the Holy Spirit that eight means uh, a new beginning. The seven means perfection, complete. God might have chosen Trump at that time. And I'm not going back there with that. And he decided to change some things over because he looked at it from a broad point of view. He looked at the whole world, the country, nation, whatever you want to call it. He didn't look at how you felt. He didn't look at what you didn't want to deal with because God would take certain situations to mature you, to stretch you. Some things you don't want, like when you tell our kids, eat them beans. Eat the broccoli. Eat what we put before your table. And they don't want to eat it. But we know that it's going to make them grow. It's healthy for them. Even though they can't see it. Until you humble yourself as a child. You're never. Brothers and sisters. We are never. Into the things of the king. His prayer is that his will be done on earth. As it is heaven. That kingdom come. We pray these prayers, but God has to come in, do some things. Peter had a vision, but that things was unclean. God said, whatever you, how can you call things unclean with things I call clean now? There are some things that's coming to help stretch you, mold you, your character. Some way, some, some way along the walk that we're walking, 
Many of us got down from the cross and not carried our cross. They understand self has to be denied. Mama sometimes has to be denied. Father, you have to deny them. You might have to forsake them. Your children, what's going on in the world, you might have to forsake them. Oh, that hurts because you're touching my flesh. I don't want you to touch my flesh. I just touched it. In the name of Jesus, I just touched it. My wife, I got a wife. I got a business or something I got to take care of. But yet, it's the same sense. And all of that carry a cross. Get an understanding that as you're living now, it's not you are that's supposed to be living, but the Christ is in you. And in order for Christ to reveal himself, he's going to have to push that old man out the way. Push the feelings and the emotions out the way. Let some sufferings take place and afflictions come. Let some fiery darts come because they might hurt, but there's a power within you that will consume it. There's a greater power of the power of the Holy Spirit is in you that will yet consume those fiery darts. Let me move on. There's more. But what I wanted to say, what I wanted to say was that dealing with that area, uh, he, 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 he looked on the outer appearance. Samuel looked on the outer appearance. God had to correct him because he's getting ready to make a choice of the outer appearance. He had to go through even as still as a prophet to learn some more. To learn some more. People dealing with people. Some people as I said have not learned their gifts. So some of them put their gifts out there and they're going to learn through trial and error. Don't beat up on them. They're not false. They might not know the, the scriptures from Genesis to Revelation. They stumble a little bit. Don't beat up on them. Because you need to go check yourself while you critiquing everything else about somebody else, you need to look at yourself. Go face yourself and look in the mirror at yourself. As I just said uh, this past Sunday, I tell some people, you know, they want to know, how can you love your enemies? I said, sometimes it ain't really your enemies the problem, it's you the problem. Sometimes God allows enemies to be in your life to show you what's a reflection of you. What you think is in them is actually a reflection. A reflection that's in you. And to that moat or that beam is out your own eye, don't try to take something out of somebody else's eye. Now, if you can see clearly, that's fine. If you learn some lessons, you don't go there no more, God can use you. But if you're just doing it because you're just trying to find something to do, God help you. He will. Because of everything you're pointing at somebody else, he might send your way. Then Jesse, uh, and again, Jesse made seven of his sons to pass before Samuel. And Samuel said unto Jesse, The Lord hath not chosen these. I just got a few minutes. And Samuel said unto the Jesse, Here are my, all my children. He said, There remains yet the youngest, and behold, he keepeth the sheep. And Samuel said to Jesse, Send and fetch him, for he will not sit down till he come hither. And I am reading out of King James Version. And he sent and brought him in, and now he was a ruddy and with all a beautiful countenance and goodly to look to. And the Lord said, Arise, anoint him, for this is he. Then Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed him in the midst of his brethren. And the Spirit of the Lord came upon David from that day forward. So Samuel, after that, rose up and went to Ramah. A rhema, whichever one you want to say. I look at it, God gave him a rhema word. Now he got to go to a place where uh, he had to get some more words. I'm just, I'm just throwing that in there. But the thing is, dealing with that area, I wanted you just to kind of see how Samuel really didn't know which one it was until God divinely intervened. Sometimes, uh, like I said, he was in mourning. Some people can want something so bad that they can uh, be in error, but they don't mean that they're, they're not being used by God. Oh, they was wrong and everything about their character is wrong. No. No, 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 no. No. Go back to when I was just talking about, like I said, dealing with Peter. I'm getting ready to end this real quick. Uh, there's more I could say, uh, even dealing with the David situation. Uh, because you have a lot of pastors and stuff that goes out here in the church. These Old Testament pastors, 
that are always kind of when Jesus came out and he chose his twelve. And I'm just throwing this there as a nugget because I'm coming, I'm coming there too. I'm, I'm going to come back. God just wants me to speak on it. But I'm going to come back. But dealing with that area, uh, people are always going back to the Old Testament telling you, uh, it's time for promotion, time for this, time for that, for you to be able to speak on things uh, whenever you uh, operate in the office or you're ordained or you're licensed or whatever they want to, man wants to give you. I'm saying man wants to give you. They always go back, hey, you got to attend the sheep out here. You got to do this, you got to do that. But when I look at how my, my Lord and Savior did things, he picked. It didn't take 20, 30 years, 15 years. It didn't take God long to pick someone to yet for, for something that needed to be fulfilled dealing with the kingdom. Jesus came, he picked some disciples. He didn't pick someone who was sitting as they were looking all gorgeous and, and looking at everything like they was the truth. <laughs> he didn't pick them. They had all the knowledge and the understanding for what they say. That was supposed to be like a Nicodemus, supposed to be a ruler of a, a, a generation, and yet they didn't have understanding of the things of the spirit. They had intellect. He didn't pick them. He picked some people who were like dumb fishermen that didn't know nothing about nothing. Worldly person who was a tax collector. They was in. They knew their customs that was around them, but yet at the same sense, he picked them. But you got people who go back in these stories and talk about certain stuff. That's the prodigal son. And the elder son I want to talk about. I'm going to talk about that in the next uh, video that I make. That the prodigal son as well as the elder son. The two difference between them. You might hear it in a different way. Hopefully I don't bring it in another way. I ask God to just give me wisdom to how to deal with it or how to say it. And I allow the Holy Spirit to just speak it through me. But the thing is, let him have his way. So dealing with that, the people will understand. Don't try to make some of these people hear it was making prophecies like they were prodigal they, like they don't mean nothing no more like they prodigal son and, and sit back like you the elder like you're going to criticize because they went out in the world uh, and said something and it was a mistake look at the heart are you looking at the outer appearance or were you looking at the heart is Trump more important is that political office more important than your brother your sister is that office, or who was in office, more important than your brothers and sisters, the, the household of faith, those that are sons and daughters in a household faith of family? Because the world represents the world. I don't care what type of Bible and what they put their hands on. The world is of the world. The world has nothing to do with God's agenda or kingdom or his way of doing things or his thoughts or his plans. I'm going to go somewhere real quick. This is just a, this is just a little something to throw out for people that said some people missed it. And then those that still want to entangle themselves with a lot of things. I'm not here. You might have an assignment. You might be given information. That's fine. I, like I said, I am here to help. When my wife is here, she's here to help, um, to do whatever needs to be done, to get information out, uh, to help the body of Christ even to grow and mature as we're growing. Uh, I do know that there are some disciples out there that need to continue to be disciples. Um, but I wanted to share this. Jesus was still going about his business on his way to Jerusalem. And this is not to throw you off. But it says, um, I'm thinking about Luke, starting at chapter 22. And he went through the cities and villages, teachers, and journeying toward Jerusalem. Then said one unto him, Lord, are there, are there few that be saved? And he said unto them, Strive to enter in at the straight gate. For me not say unto you, will seek to enter in, and shall not be able. He says a lot. While you're calling everybody false, you can be false. Because when that hour, that day comes, you might not make it in. You might not make it in. The very one you think might not be the one, might be the one. As you read through this, uh, you go to chapter Luke chapter 13, 
Uh, you can read all of it, as far as I'm concerned. Uh, he just talks about different things, you know. Uh, there are certain iniquities. There's going to be people that you thought that was last shouldn't even be in. They're going to be the first and the ones that think they should be going in might be the last. And you don't even know if you're going to be the first one to be bind up or you might be the one that's coming in last. That's going to be tossed out with the national teeth uh, of teeth because uh, some people have followed the broad way. The broad way. Only few are found the narrow. And so God is using voices. I think when I hear people, that, that brings me... Bring, even my conscience will bring me back to say, oh, I, I can't be focused on everything going on around me in this world. It'll bring to a, a narrow point. But I want to hear some, something that was said, and it says, uh, I guess you could say verse 31 in chapter 13. It said, the same day there came certain another Pharisee saying unto him, get thee out and depart thence from her, for Herod will kill thee. And he said unto them, this is Jesus, Go ye, tell that fox, Behold, I cast out devils, and I do cures today, and tomorrow, and the third day, and I shall be perfected. That means, I don't care what's going on in this world. I'm going to still do what I need to do tomorrow, the next day, until it stops. And yet, he still ain't going to be able to stop it. He's prophetically speaking certain things for the next day, the next day, and forevermore. Nevertheless, I must walk. This is verse 33. Nevertheless, I must walk today and tomorrow. And the day falling, for it cannot be that a prophet perish out of Jerusalem. O Jerusalem, Jerusalem, which killeth the prophets, and stoneth them that are sent unto thee, how often would I have gathered thy children together, as a hen doeth gather her brood under her wings, and ye would not. Ye, you would not. You would not take people. That God is using it to gather us together to say, hey, come on, everybody, come on. Let's go this narrow way. Let's not go to broad. Some of us have to reach out here because some people go far out to the left field. And some people way over here in the right field. And when we're trying to come together, you just want to get them together. Let's go. I don't want not one to perish. Behold, your house is left unto you desolate. 35. Behold, your house is left unto you desolate. And verily I say to you, you shall not see me until the time come when you shall say, Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. I have more to say. I'm just close my Bible. It's tall, it's tall. Oh, it's, I, I got a new one I bought two years ago and I ain't even use it. I've still been using this the past probably 10, over 10, 15 years. But, um, yes. Yeah. I want my brothers and sisters that are out there working. My brothers and sisters out there, the children out there, the sons and the daughters that are out there walking. Remember that you are blessed in the name of the Lord. Regardless of what everybody else is saying. You out there whatever night, and I know sometimes it can seem like that when I, even I might come, and maybe others that might speak are coming, and it seems like, okay, it might be a, seem like a little chastisement, it might be whatever night, but I really believe that we need some mentors. I didn't have a mentor. Never had a mentor. Never. I'm going to explain that and then probably in the next video that I make, I'm going to share you about some of my testimony and stuff where I came from. I came from the streets. When I say I came from the streets, I'm talking about I was homeless. Homeless at the age of 16, 17 years old. When I say from the streets, streets where there was no shelter streets where I didn't know where I was going to get my meals from unless I dug into a trash can to get them and had the presence of God on me then because I was raised in the church ever since I was a little boy I read that word from three four five on up was the one that always was going to church sung in all the choirs but certain things changed in life life changed on me if you want to say I lost someone loved one death it was time for them to go to sleep And my journey had begun. My journey had begun. There's more. There's more. Where well, I had relationships. I'm not going to put names out there and make people feel a certain way. But the things that I had to endure. Just because you don't know sometimes. You're ignorant. You're young. You're growing. You're dealing with life. There's a world. And then, then there's things of, of the kingdom. You didn't know a lot of things of the kingdom because nobody taught you. The relationship. 
where I was about out of my mind because I was hurt emotionally dealing with a lot of stuff. Um, where I had to be institutionalized. Can't tell you how many trips, I say about 16, involuntary by the state of North Carolina. Depressed, manic depression is what they call it back then. When they were asking me about voices and did I hear things, I used to sit there and say, yeah, I hear voices. I, the Holy Spirit, I didn't speak in tongues then. Feel with God's presence. It was like I was born for something. Born for something. And had God's presence over my life. Great great grandfather was a preacher. Found out my great great grandfather had preachers and I and whatever, but that's that's them in that generation in that time. But because the world asked me certain questions, yeah, I heard voices. What are those voices talking about? I'm talking about the word. Jesus, I hear voices. Straight jackets, padded room, you name it. If anybody would have seen me, I was like Legion. The presence of God would seem like I was out of my mind. Because I, I, didn't, I didn't fit. I didn't fit in this world. Out of my mind. If anybody didn't see me take medicine or relatives didn't see me take certain medicine, um, they could just call the sheriff's department. They'd ship me down to Button of North Carolina where they had me... Uh, institutionalized people who were schizophrenic and whatnot. And the crazy thing about it, I never took the medicine. I wasn't crazy. I was torn. Some of you are torn between this world and the kingdom. One foot in, one foot out. The last thing I wanted just to say to somebody, that when you're thinking about some people, you know, forgive them. Forgive people for they know not what they do because you yourself sometimes do things that you don't even know what you're doing. Forgive them. My brothers and sisters, if, you, if you're a Christian, which means Christ-like, forgive them. And if you have a problem or you got some answers that you need or information, find that person and get in touch with that person. You're making the church like a spectacle out here in the world. When we need to talk about unity and come together. And I, Pastor, there's a lot more that I can say, whatever. Not, I'm not here to argue. Like I said, I'm here to help. But if there are some religious spirits out there, if there are some traditional spirits out there, I'm talking about spirits, custom things, that yet that, that, that doesn't mount up to nothing, doesn't benefit the soul. We got a problem. I'm not going to be civil with it. I'm going to tell you how the Holy Spirit gives it to me. There's people that sit back and just analyze and analyze and analyze stuff. Brothers, sisters, I know some brothers and sisters that my wife actually looks on to this um, internet. I think it's Brother Rogers and uh, Beam of Light and, and some others. Uh, Chris, some, some of you, y'all keep doing what you uh, torch. I think um, Christ, Torch for Christ. I think Brother Philip. Y'all keep doing what you all doing. I'm not using nobody's name for this and, and for that. I don't care about this. I don't care about uh, uh, trying to, what's called it. But I will tell someone, if you hear this video, share it with somebody that you know that's been uh, beat down. This feels like they want to throw in the towel. Or I just need someone to encourage them to say, hey, I'm here. Because God will always make a way of an escape. And if you can't get, a, get across to people, hey, cut them off. Let them go. All you have to do is focus on saving souls. Those that don't want to hear you, you might not can reach. I might just have one or two to just listen to this video. That's fine enough with me. Because this is not the full opportunity. I have to minister at my the ministry I'm at. I have to uh, teach those that I come in contact with. I have to share those that come and need some type of counseling or, or relatives that come around or just even in my own household to, to govern my own household as the priest of my home. I got enough that I have to do the people I cross with. I don't have time to entertain spirit. I will entertain an angel. I hope I run into one. For foul spirits, I don't have time to entertain. I cast them out. 
I rebuke them, I bind them, and I bring some type of correction to it. And I get do it all in the name of Jesus. I got more to say. I just want to speak to real quick. Remember, we're trying to overcome the con of mind. Those that are out there that went for Christ might have been doing it for a few years. I've been doing this for almost since I was a, for a lifetime, but I really didn't start really getting into it until I turned 30 years old. As I said before, I'm well over 50. There's a lot of renewing has to take place here. Your brain and your heart don't think the same. You can want to love from the heart, forgive people from the heart, but yet it seems that sometimes your mind is saying something else. You have to get to understand your mind, soul, and the spirit. You have to make it one, and then you're struggling with this flesh. There's a war of iniquity and, and, and wars that are going on that has been shaking this look up, but you can't discipline this. Uh, one, tell, one thing I tell people, my wife, we go to the gym. I've been going to the gym for years. But my wife, when she started going to the gym this year, pretty much, she she has this thrive to say, hey, I got to go. It, it makes me feel. If you operate according to the word, you exercise, you exercise even the more this physical flesh, the more it starts reshaping and reforming and it transforms. Well, whenever you do this word, you, you don't be a hearer only. Be a doer also. When you do it, you become it. Do it, do it, keep doing it, the more you become. Your spirit living down on the inside of this place, this flesh has no place but to be subject to it. But one is overpowering the other. And if you don't have enough love in you to forgive someone, something just overpowers you. I tell people, and I've said this before, you can talk about love all day long, but love and faith work together because you have to have action. You can't tell me you love me and you don't have action. Then act on it. If you're mad at me, embrace me. Don't stand far from me. Embrace me as if you love me. Now I can see an act of faith and that you're continuously doing it. But if you're just telling me with words that you love me, that's not enough. That's not enough. It, 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 it does a little bit. But when I see some works behind it, and I'm not talking about the works of religious work. I'm talking about anything that you believe. There's some works behind it. If I need something, don't tell me, well, I, God bless you, whatever, and you do, and you do actually have something that you give me. To help me, Book of James talked about this. That's not faith when you got it. It definitely ain't love. Just you, you using words don't. That's not enough. I'm here to help you, brothers and sisters. I'm here to help you, sons and daughters. I'm here to help you, babes in Christ. We want you to grow up. Don't call it example. Something you need to get around somebody that's a mentor that can teach you, and then at the same time. When you get to a place you don't need nobody to teach you because you're really getting this word. Don't just always, just keep always listening to someone and listening to someone because you want to see a re very reflection of who you are. When you open this up, find yourself. Are you in here? Are you written down in the Lamb's Book of Life? We have enough of the Facebook issues, problems, Instagrams, whatever that stuff is out there. I don't do them. But we got enough of that stuff out there. But in this one, this is all that's going to matter. I want to know when our Lord and Savior come, will your name, could you find your name right now as a son and a daughter in the Lamb's Book of Life? That's all I have to say. I went over y'all when I was 19 minutes. An hour 19 minutes, but I ain't going to come back. I am sorry. Um, my um, videos that we have made and repositioning yourself uh, the repositioning yourself and exposing somebody had got back to me and tell me it's kind of low-key when they listen to it 
I do tell everybody if you get a chance to uh, probably put some headphones on, it comes clear, but it will bless you. It will really bless you. And if you can't share with other people, this is the, this is the help. Pass, inform somebody, to teach somebody, to teach somebody, to help somebody, to help somebody, to inform, to bring truth to someone. So if you can share it to somebody, mama, daddy, somebody, it might not be for you, but you might run the country. What's called, we're here to work together. Body, believers, family, we're here to work together. There was more that scripture that I was going to read that it was talking about dealing with that how the house would be de left desolate. In the wheel, Jesus already talked about in one house where the division take place. Because you're going to have in one house some that believe and some don't believe. Some that might have matured and some that's not trying to mature no more. Some that, that's walking with Christ Some just no longer walk with Christ. And some people that are seeking his faith, and some that are not paying no mind. All they want is what his hand can give to them. Many believers out there, they want Savior. They want to escape heaven or hell. Let, let me put it this way. They want to escape hell. They want to go to heaven. But don't, don't realize that him as Savior means he has to be Lord over your life. They want the benefit. But that's it. Let me ask all you Christians. All you believers to say that you're believers. That you love the Lord. Is he Lord? Is he God? Or is he Savior over your life? Because all you want is his hand. But you don't want his heart. What are you confessing out of your mouth? What are you confessing out of your mouth? Because that day is going to come. And the people are going to honor him. It could be the day, the next minute, the next hour. Honor him with his mouth, their mouth, he or she, will honor our Lord with their mouth and our heart be far from it. And if your name is in here and it's like that, he don't know you. He don't know you. Can you forgive? If you can't, he don't know you. He talks about so much. If you deny his word and know that he's sent, that's so much. Brothers and sisters, be careful. Be careful. Because while you got one finger pointed at one, it's old saying it's just the same. You actually do have three pointed back at you. Let's come together. Let's work together. Let's love together. There's much more to be said, especially dealing with the local body of church <coughs> the local body of believers knows the sitting in the, 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 the places those high places as well out to the pews and I want to say something real quick those that are in the pews some of the things that you might be going with lay members it's not always sometimes your pastor's fault it's not always sometimes those, the, the gifts of the Spirit is in the body of Christ. It's not always their, their fault. Sometimes it's your fault. Because, as I said before, you have not acted on the Word of God. If you have problems with certain things that's in the church or, or the body of believers, go feel free to go share with. Now, I'm not sure, I can't tell you how it might happen. Because I was uh, written off in churches when I just wanted to have a meeting. But any church in the body of Greensboro, North Carolina here, they know me. And they know if I have a problem, if somebody's got an accusation or if somebody wants to persecute me, I'm going to say, bring your witnesses with you. Or I'm going to say, hey, let's sit down. Let's go before those that are in some type of authority. Because I want to settle the situation. I'm a peacemaker. Blessed are the peacemakers. But lay members, sometimes it's your fault. 
Because you're not speaking up, you're not getting the word for yourself, you're not becoming the word so you can act on the word and do it by faith and in love. I don't have no much, nothing else to say. This is it. I got to go. Uh, my wife, she will post this later this afternoon. But uh, I will be back. And I just wanted to touch base because I was hearing a lot of things. My wife brought some things to my attention. Other people brought some things to my attention. And I kind of had my wife to turn on the internet so I can kind of look at certain things and, and you see certain stuff. And I like, like I said, I, I try not to deal with my eye gate. I'm an ear gate. Well, I hopefully, if you heard something, you allow these words to seep deep down in your ears. And Jesus said that, hear me, take heed what you hear. Let my words seep deep in your ears. And I pray that you hear. I've had heard what the Spirit of the Lord is saying. Take care. I pray that you be strong, you hold fast, be rooted and grounded in your Lord and Savior. Call on his name, watch him rescue you. Have a blessed day, people. Family, I love you. And if there's somebody out there that's an unbeliever, um, I will post and have an insert. Um, dealing with, and I, I meant to say this earlier, an insert uh, where my wife will have, I guess, through the email uh, with this. Uh, anybody, and it was about a building, I would talk about it later. If anybody wants to give up a building, uh, has one they want to give up, or wants to, I don't know, uh, touch base with me about. Uh, I would talk about it later. I don't have enough time. I have to leave. But you probably can uh, send an email to Faith and Glory Movers. Uh, it's just my moving company because uh, I got to go deal with a customer and pick up my guys and stuff. Uh, but dealing with that area, uh, send it to our email. And if you have, I don't want nothing else. This is just people who's going to just respond um, through the email as far as if you have a building that you want to give. Uh, if it's something uh, like that you inherited or something, uh, I'd be, I, I, I will be appreciated. Uh, we're trying to do some new things uh, here locally, uh, connect.